So welcome along everyone to a uh, fab little tutorial where we're going to do a uh, close up tree with lots of water and lots of splashing about. So uh, get your splashing about painting gear on and uh, let's get started. So we've got a flat surface, flat paper all ready to go. I've got a little square drawn out, a little square, it's about 10 by 10 and we're just going to use Peter the propelling pencil just put some very basic guidelines on so all we need in the center is a tree trunk so it's about yay big which is about 20 centimeters a couple of dots either side and just take it straight line down and a little curve yeah so that's where the roots start to go into the earth and then this bit we go a couple of lines out a little V shape, maybe another and off. That's your tree trunk. That's all there is to it. So the grass area, we're just going to do around here. A little wobbly line to remind yourselves. And the foliage, that's the leaves, are going to fall down below the top of the tree trunk about here. So a couple of little swirls. And this will vary quite a lot in this particular approach, guys. So tree trunk, earth, uh, leaves and that's your lot we'll put a few branches in but they will go on as we do it guys so that's all the drawing sweet and simple okay so let's get back together in a moment or two and ready to splash it all about So welcome back guys, are you ready to rumble? We certainly are, the loose gang. Let's get going, so we're gonna start with Big Brian, there he is, and what we're gonna do for a start is we're gonna put water on, okay? Start at the top, I'm starting at the top left. A bit better with a clean brush, there it is. A bit better if it didn't move, okay, let's get going. Let's start with some water on. Top, drag your water across and down, and then just drag it down yeah get a bit more water and there's a few little gaps within the water area but not too many on this one so we're down to the tr uh, leaf level now the sky level blue and then underneath we've got the earth level so this is water lots of water little gaps that's all there are and then where the tree trunk is a bit of water down the center and that's it again you can't really see it on screen even I can't see it but we've got water for the trees and leaves we've got water for the sky we've got water for the base area and we've got water on the tree trunk okay that's it so let's get some paint on there that's good amount of paint we're going to start with lemon yellow and we're going almost to a cream strength straight away we're going to decide where the sunshine is Let's go around there, plonk it down. And I'm just plonking it down. That means putting it down and letting it run into the water. And where I left gaps, they will show through because the water won't go and I'm working flat. Okay, there's the first color. Second color, mine is gold ochre, but you could use um, lemon yellow with cat orange quite easily. Look at the way that swirls about, my word. Goodness me, beautiful, beautiful. This is what watercolour is all about, guys. Fluid, easy paint, no stress. So you see that diving? Now we've got sap green. Get some down this side. And more. And more. Now where I said tree trunks, you can go over them because we're going to paint into them as well. 
So there is your sap green. So it's a few scrapes. And I'm generally pulling the paint down and then I'm just putting a few dobs of the stuff in. Now it's going to float everywhere. What it will do is gather at the edges, which is quite nice. Clean off that brush. Well done, Brig Brian. It keeps diving into the pools of water. Now I've got uh, Royal Blue. I'm just going to drag a couple of lines there. Look how simple that was. Now don't drag it quite quickly and don't move the brush about because that's where you get your mucky colours. These will bleed in, but they're not actually mucky colours. Huh? So we've got that on. Maybe a dab more a bit lower. Keep them even. Yeah. So there's your blue, Mr. Blue Sky. I'm going to go back in with a bit of yellow just here. So that equals up to where the yellow was up there. Then sap green. Now notice I just leave tiny little gaps and these gaps stop the paint jumping back in, flooding back in. But because the paper is flat on the surface and not on a tilt, it just moves around a little bit. You know, not heavy movement. Okay, we've got everything on guys, we've got everything on. So now I'm going to get a little bit of torn off tissue. I'm going to pick up some excess. So this is excess, you might not be able to see it, but where it gathers, it's just going to roll about for ages. And we've got painting to do, so I haven't got time for it to wait. You leave this a few seconds, maybe half a minute, and it'll start to gather. And it will keep regathering. And what it is, it's your liquid paint and your uh, water all just floating about. Now look at the way that just bleeds in. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right, let's get the tree on. I'm going in with Indian Red, Cream Strength. I decide where I want the trunk to start and it's going to be about there so it's under the trees and I'll just drag that down. That little curve and the further you push this up the further it obviously goes into the tree line and I can show those little branches coming through. So don't move the brush about too much that's the thing just tap little taps can have some that go a bit further as well. Yeah? Cool? Yeah, cool. Sepia. Cream strength. Down the centre this time. And we'll just bring it roughly down to the base. Not all the way over because it will, remember, it will still move about. It'll bleed. A little bit in these trunks. We won't put any there. We'll use our secondary brush that we're going to use. Only using two brushes on this one, guys. We're going to use the fabulous, fabled Miss Rigari. She is a great little brush. If you've not got one, drop into the shop. We can sort you one out, and you'll be Miss Rigarin very soon as well. Okay. So this is just floating about now. Yeah. So this looks quite, this, this looks like a child's painting, yeah? But we're going to make it into an adulty painting with Miss Rigger. I'm going to pick up for a start Indian Red. And what I'm going to do is flick, I'm going to put this into the edge of the tree and I'll just flick that off a little bit. Now this tells me quite a few things. It tells me how liquid the paint is and how liquid the surfaces as well so if it really bleeds off it's very wet still but we don't mind that particularly in this style in this approach because we want it to bleed off we want those fluid lines when it comes down to the bottom I do a few little jumps little bunny hops there they are look at them. bunny hop bunny hop see this bit's drier that's telling me that's drier and the roots are really just jumping in to the green grass. A little bit of sepia, look at that. So it's basically light and dark browns we're using for the tree. A 
we're just flicking this out. Extend a, a few branches up through the tree, not too far because your foliage is really covering a lot of these uh, branches. You know when you look up in a tree, especially in summertime, it's uh, you can't see the we well, can't see the wood for the leaves. Let's try that. Not a bad phrase. Flicking a few through these dry pieces. Yeah. Remember those bits we left? Now they're coming in useful. A few across here. Again, if you put your branches on, put them at the bottom like that. Because that's where you may see them in reality. Look at the way this paint's just bleeding into this liquid area. A remarkable. Gradually drying. Pull a few out a bit further. Don't get too hard, don't get bad. Few just into the dry paint. Yeah. Super duper. Super duper. Okay, we got that on. Right, let's get some flickage on. We know what flickage is, don't we? Bit of this. So I'm going with gold ochre for a start and Miss Rigger I'm just flicking this on so hold your finger over it tap it gentle little taps will give you small little dots big wallops will give you bigger ones as well when it falls into the tree look just looks like little leaves autumn leaves fabulous 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 bit on the grass fallen leaves yeah, I don't worry about the vagaries of it. What I would do is put, if you're using a um, half a sheet, cover the other half with a, a blank bit of paper. Use paper you don't want, and that will save it for another day. Sap green. Now you may be trying this flicking with a brush that's not really fab at flicking. Miss Rio works so well because of the length of the bristles and it's uh, synthetic so it bounces back in position quite easily. Okay, we're going good guys. Look at this, beautiful, beautiful or what? Now an interesting one we're going to throw in now is not colour, it's just water on Miss Rigger. Flick Miss Rigger with some water. And what this does, it moves the paint about a bit more. So wherever it lands, paint says, oh look here lads, let's go and follow this little river. So we've got that on guys, all going good. Now I'm going to throw on a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, co uh, cream strength again. It needs to be cream because anything lighter will just disappear. It'll blend into all of these uh, little marks. Now you notice we're flicking more than painting. Now the uh, watercolour police will be okay with that I think. Yeah I'll just flick it don't worry. I know I wasn't painting but I'm having a day off. There. Bleeding. 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 Now by flicking it on, we're not moving the paint about, it's just gently bleeding out, that's all it's doing. So you see the gathering again, a little bit at the bottom, blue sky at the back, yeah. Now with a bit of water on this rigger again, all I'm going to do is flick a few lines up, not too far. These are just giving me a little bit of suggestion of foliage, but every so often and so often is quite often actually, I'm cleaning the brush. Not dipping it into water, but just wiping the brush off on the tissue. And what this does is make sure I don't keep carrying lots of uh, the colours into each other. So 
clean again here I'm more dabbing so I'm trying to make the shape of the whatever's there and these are obviously going to be leaves here I'm more dabbing water than dragging maybe in the tree itself I've got water on again I'm just dragging this in the direction of the uh, tree itself if there's any smooth edges I'll rough them up a bit I've got a bit of seep here again I'm just tapping this in picking out a few of those little lines again don't make these lines too long only little pockets on them, your eye will jump from the branches and uh, look as if the branches all gone all the way up and then you just place it in position now the real skill of this if it is a skill because this bit this is a doddle it's fun that's what it is the skill would be to uh, just corral just shepherd the paint about a bit and not overdo it and then it gets nice subtle little marks within the painting yeah so you're going good guys you're going good I can tell I can feel how well you're doing So generally these branches I go down a little bit and then lift them up and I work my way across. Now then it's more difficult as I've said before in previous videos, it's more difficult for me to right paint this side because I'm trying to keep the paint or the painting flat. So I can't move it about but you guys can twist it about, move it about. I try not to tilt it though because what will happen all of the paint will run to the bottom and it looks quite nice and it works particularly well in certain effects but if you're not careful you'll end up with a big pile of colours all at the bottom you'll think oh what do I do with those you've got to keep it in position and just allow it to bleed a little bit into each other so we've got all that on guys now I'm just going to make a, mix a little bit of cobalt blue and sap green together making it a little bit darker and I'm just going to tap a few darker leaves in so a few there and you notice it's still wet so if the conditions you are working in are quite dry i.e. you might, might have air con or something like that just test a little bit don't go for your big painting straight away see how long it takes to dry and just learn a bit of, about your painting environment it will help otherwise you might say well it dries too quickly well move away from the aircon a bit put more water on and uh, see how that goes you may also need to make your paint more liquid than uh, you are doing and again just as I say just work it around how you yep you individually are working your conditions yep there we go so notice put a little bit more darker stuff on this side than on the other side because that's where we said the light was going to be so I might make these a few little bits down here, a bit darker, but again when I put the brush down I just put it down and push it to get a shape I don't care really what it uh, specifically should be, maybe grasses and then I'll leave this side a little bit lighter final thing I'll do, just pick off a little bit of excess again I said it might gather so there's only a little bit at the bottom, we pick most of it off interesting thing you can do You've got that beautiful dark center of the tree but you can actually pick a little bit off that dries it a bit yeah so I've picked off the pigment 
but now I'm going back with pigment and running some through it. Great little trick. So what it does is lighten the area, but then you can go back in and reshape it. So it gives you a little bit more form just on that particular bit. So that's it guys. Straightforward, simple, and above all, jolly good fun. So give this one a whirl. Mr. Tree is waiting for you, and let's gather again very, very soon.